I'm going to take a couple more calls, so uh, let's go straight to David in Glasgow. David, hello. Morning, Nick. Are you well? Good. We are very well indeed. Good to have you, David. Uh, over to you. Yeah, we've had, we've had various conflicts with Israel-Palestine over the years, and we've seen various, you know, demonstrations, if you can call it that, you know, etc., you know, you know, over the years. Yeah. However, today, I think, is unlike anything we've ever experienced in history, because we've got the Ukraine war with mm. Russia sitting in the sidelines. We've got these 100,000-plus migrants come into this country of who knows what they are, and we've already seen a number of terrorist attacks in various places within Europe. We're sitting in an absolute powder keg, and I cannot, uh, uh, something will happen shortly. You know, it's got to happen because the, the, the probability is there. You know? And and actually, on a same theme, David, uh, and and I think that explains why people are, 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 or some people will certainly be fearful. But I also wonder how stretched we're going to be because you know we are offering support, diplomatic support, aid, which is money, and we will also be offering uh, a, a limited military support. You can't fight. I mean, Israel will have potentially have the problem of fighting on two fronts. Mm. But so will the UK and the and the partners who are trying to support them. You know, it, it was, just, go on. Yeah, what was not mentioned very much in the news, and it hasn't really been mentioned much. And I think it's a, a, a really quite a significant event. Was the rocket that was fired from Yemen towards Israel inter intercepted by the US uh, battle cruiser? Yeah. Now I, that that, yeah. that to me is highly significant because that is other elements of the, the region, as you put it, coming into play. And then if you throw in this potential thing with this tube driver, you know, we, we've got to get... that the, the UK government, I think, and I know it's controversial, has to sort of turn around and say, look, MI5 are warmed. It's, it's a risky situation that we're in today. We have to stop these uh, demonstrations. Any demonstration. Very interesting you say that because yeah. uh, the question, you looked at what France did mm. and they tried yeah. to ban demonstrations. They still took place, which is why you got confrontation, CS gas, everything on the streets. Now, I don't know if the alternative policy being pursued by the British police of, if you like, uh, not full on policing, let the demonstrations happen, uh, is, is the right one or not. But I suspect if you ask most MPs, they would say the right to protest is actually something we should protect. Otherwise, we're quick, giving in to the terrorists. Quick, what would quick, you say quick, to that? Quick, quickly on that one, then, Nick. You, you, you as, a, as an uh, you know, the MP politician, right? Former, sorry, yeah? Yeah. You know, if the head of MI5 said mm. to the public, you know, effectively, we're at high risk of terrorism events, then I would expect everybody, politicians, government, everybody, to react to that and reduce the risk as much as possible to stop anything happening. And David, I, I th again, I, I would agree with you on this. What I'm frustrated by is we're getting messages from the Home Secretary, the politicians, that they will not tolerate anything that breaks the law, and yet oh. here we are today discussing people in a protest, chanting jihadi songs, uh, ch 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 jihadi slogans, which are basically about the destruction of Jews and Israel, and nothing mm -hmm. being Done. Yeah. And that's the point David's hit the nail on the head on. David, thank you very much thank indeed you, for your call. Ab absolutely. We've got, I mean, we've got this disconnect, as you say, between what the politicians are saying and what the police are doing. I have to say, Nick, I mean, let's just remind uh, viewers and listeners, there was this awful incident this week where there was the um, uh, sort of uh, ad van with its illuminated ad um, uh, about um, with the sort of, you know, horrific um, uh, lead moving images of people who are missing uh, uh, in Israel. And the police stopped it and told it to, uh, and, and made it switch it off and go home. Because they might offend one community, well, but it doesn't seem they're bothered about it. About offending another exactly, community. and therefore what we need is if you're going to do one, you have to do the other. We have the police have to be seen to be to be fair because otherwise they're going to lose public trust. And I think the big danger, is, um, uh, uh, you know, is that you have a kind of kickback uh, from people who are rather upset that um, that things are going on on the streets, and we don't want that to happen. So it's very hard to very, well, very well put. The right to protest is so important. I'm just before I go and take uh, Brian in Harrow, just read this out, Nick. I'm a pilot. This is referring.
referring yeah. to the analogy made Absolutely. by uh, about the tube driver had they been a pilot. I'm a pilot and I can say that I would probably be dismissed if I made an announcement like the tube driver. I think probably would be an understatement there, but Paul, you're spot on. Uh, he's, he's, by the way, Paul is from Singapore. Uh, I wouldn't obviously do it, being a descendant of prosecuted Jew, persecuted Jews, even if I was a Muslim, as it would be unprofessional and unpleasant. I am in Singapore at the moment, a very well-ordered, if somewhat authoritarian, country. I could, however, tell a female colleague that she would be safe in the city here at night. I couldn't do that in the UK, sadly. Paul from Singapore, it would be fantastic if you'd been able to call him, but I do realise it's late. I think that is a very well articulated yeah, message really that a lot of people here are going to actually think is the right answer. Big question, and I'm not asking you this because we could be here Absolutely. all day. You know, how, how, should we be more authoritarian? That's that's out there. That's just yeah, yeah. just it's out there. Getting the balance right, isn't um, it? Brian in Harrow. Hello, Brian. Hi, Nick. Yeah. I think Sir Ella Braverman is 20 years too late in what she said about if this country's been invaded. Tony Blair invaded this country. He opened the floodgates to Europe. We got eight million uh, Eastern Europeans here. We got four million U Muslims, and they're multiplying. It all the time basically this country i got on the radio 20 years ago and i said exactly what's happened now to this country and i got cut off and they said i was called a racist basically and what i said not because it's me but are friends of mine we've all said it in this country this is not the country that we had before this country has been massively invaded by the rest of the world and we've sat back and, and accepted it and the tory party uh, should be ashamed of themselves who let a million people in every year for the last 12 or 13 years and this country now is not england as it used to be it's just a foreign country in my opinion i mean the stats would disagree with you i, I mean if you looked at the numbers but I do understand entirely in, po in pockets of the country, in my constituency, one of those, many people do feel uh, uh, that their country is, that, that their town and their area is unrecognisable uh, because of, uh, well, let's call it multi multiculturalism, because of immigration. But actually, they don't recognise their country because, as I can say confidently in a mild patch of parts of Enfield, what would actually happen is groups of people would come in from different countries and actually not integrate into those countries, not learn the language, which I, some people say, well, why should you force people to learn language? Well, if you come here for safety and economic well-being, the best route to do that is learn the language. It's, I, uh, learning the language is absolutely vital for anybody who arrives yeah. in the country for their for their benefit yeah. uh, 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 and for their help them get on in society. So it but, should be an absolutely non-controversial issue that uh, speaking English is is, 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 is is basically a precondition. Brian wants to come back at us. Yes, please. come back, Brian. Yeah. OK, I live in Harrow. I bought yeah. my house in 86. Yeah, I used to live there many years ago. OK, my road was 90% white. Now it's 5% white. Yeah, but is it about colour or is it about... No, no, I'm not saying that. Yeah. Listen, the people that live around me, I get on fa fantastically well. I'm not criticising that. But the way this country has now changed is massively dramatic. And if anybody that says it hasn't changed, if you let... When the IRA were bombing us, will we let the IRA march down and put... Uh, deface our monuments and let them get away with it. I mean, it's the same thing, in my opinion. These marches, when I see all those women, mostly women on those Muslim marches, are shouting their heads off, and, and they can't do that in their own circumstances, basically. Well, that is true. Our libertarian laws, our freedom of speech, which we <laughs> fiercely, uh, we fiercely uh, protect here, have in, in some ways... I can understand why some people feel it's been abused. Brian, thank you very much yes, from Harrow.